So RNA has many functions, and some of these functions include the following. Obviously, we've discussed in other presentations the synthesis of proteins, and this includes the various um, most common types of RNA, the transfer RNA, the ribosomal RNA, and the messenger RNA. RNA, as I noted, is the genetic material for certain RNA-containing viruses. RNA has been found to catalyze reactions in some cases, and this type of RNA has the name of a ribozyme. RNA is also more recently described as being able to control gene expression, and these little tiny RNAs called miRNA and siRNA participate in a process we describe as RNA interference. And last, RNAs participate in the processing of yet even other RNAs. And these are called small nuclear RNAs or snow RNAs, as we shall see. Now, RNA, of course, uh, has a structure uh, made uh, that comes from the nucleotides comprising it. And the nucleotides are ribonucleotides, A, U, C, and G. The, the um, RNA strands are a little bit different from DNA strands in that RNAs are usually present in a single-stranded form, although some viruses have a double-stranded uh, nature. The single-stranded form of RNA can pair with itself in many cases. And one of the reasons this is more commonly happening with RNA than it is with, for example, a single strand of DNA, is that in RNA, a base pair between G and U is somewhat stable. A GT-based pair in DNA is not stable. Watson and Crick were credited with discovering the B form of DNA, which you can see on the right side of this slide. Rosalind Franklin, whose data they borrowed, um, discovered the A form of DNA that you see on the left. Now, the reason I'm showing you these two slides is that RNA also has some specific configurations that it makes. The A form of DNA and the B form of DNA, though they look very similar, are not the same. The B form of DNA, you see in the base is aligned in what looks like a stair-step fashion on the right, but in the A form, those bases are not flat. Now, it turns out that the A form of, of DNA is also the form that DNA-RNA duplexes form, and it's also the form that RNA-RNA duplexes form. So for our purposes, the A form will be the more relevant structure to be thinking about with respect to the structure of RNA when it's in a duplex. Now, I want to illustrate one of the common types of self-pairing things that RNA molecules can do. And this depends on the sequences, of course. So we see on the, the screen a, a sequence of a single strand of RNA. Now, the bases in this RNA actually are able to uh, form complementary pairs with each other. And you can see this in the red uh, nucleotides that I've marked here. What happens with this RNA is that these nucleotides can find each other very readily, and when they do, they form what's called a stem loop structure. This stem loop structure arises from the fact that there is an inverted repeat of those nucleotides, and that inverted repeat of those nucleotides allows for a pairing structure such as we see. We call this structure a stem loop, and it's sometimes also called a hairpin. A stem loop has, obviously, a loop at the top and a stem at the bottom. Now, we see this self-pairing nature of RNA in many different forms of RNA. Here is actually a ribozyme, a catalytic RNA, and you can see that it has extensive sets of structures um, or, or base pairings within itself. These types of base pairings are referred to as secondary structures. So the stem loops are examples that we can see very simply in this figure. And we can also see that there are stems that have mismatches within there. So it's not like everything is perfectly paired and not like everything has to be perfectly paired in order to give this structure. There are also unpaired regions within the molecule, as you can see here. And last, there are stems that have bulges, and bulges arise where there are portions that pair, and then inserts, uh, as you can see on the bottom uh, sequence, that don't fit into the overall structure. Now, I, we've seen before in another presentation that the various ribosomal RNAs have secondary structure as well, and these, of course, arise from the self-pairings that you see here. It's thought that these secondary structures of these small ribosomal RNAs are important for the binding of proteins in the ribosome and to give those proteins the structure that the ribosome ultimately has. Now, we've also seen in another presentation the structure of transfer RNAs, and the transfer RNAs have this internal base pairing uh, sequence that we've seen uh, here. 
And last, we've also seen the larger ribosomal RNAs, whose sequence is so large we can't show you uh, the individual nucleotides very clearly, but in the figure on the right you can get an idea of all the stems and stem loops and mismatches and so forth that are appearing in that molecule.